What's up guys, it's Nightwing2303 and Jeronmon from Wartesters.com and today we have episode 3 of Trash Talk. Before we get this started, if you're wondering where I got this t-shirt, it's from a brand called Deceased Fame. Go to my channel, it's the second most recent uploaded video. It's a little brand spotlight on them. It's my buddy, he runs his company. Or just stay tuned to the end of the video and at the end slate we'll have a link and all that stuff. So, the first topic we're going to be going over today is Jared Leto's Joker, are you excited? And we have a clip that we want to share. It's a vine of what possibly Jared Leto might sound like as the Joker. Nothing confirmed, nothing official, just speculation. But Jared Leto has been really smart into giving fanboys little tidbits and Easter eggs of what may or may not be his portrayal as Joker. So let's take a look at this vine. I have not seen this. He hasn't seen it. I'm excited. I, I think he'll like it. I know I appreciate it. It's a very, it's very, again, very small tidbit, but let's take a look. On this song, you're gonna get really, really, really crazy. On this song, you're gonna Is get really, yeah. really, really crazy. On this song, you're gonna get really, really, Okay. Oh, so what the think? Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a great sign coming from you. I know that's how I felt when I first heard it. I was like, wow, right? I've I've heard watched read almost everything mm -hmm. on this character. Right. From the campy days, mm -hmm. from the little serials that they had. Uh-huh to Cesar Romero's version, which is the Adam West TV show. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jack Nicholson, the animated series with Mark Hamill. The best. Every single animated movie I own, so all of them, right. all right? If there's a bigger nerd out there, mm -hmm. I'd like to meet him, <laughs> but there isn't one, okay? okay? So it's all, it starts and ends with me right here, and that, I just like, I kind of piss my pants a little bit <laughs> so um, great that's awesome yeah i'm that's excited good. i'm excited yeah i mean everything that's been coming out of the dc universe for me has been all right but i am so excited for suicide squad and that portion of the universe i wasn't even excited for it until i heard that see will smith is like that was just like my idol growing up i loved will smith but that fool is weird as I know, I know. Well, you can thank and his, his kids. kids. You can thank his kids. But they had that going for him. I just think Suicide Squad for me is going to be my favorite part of the DC Universe. Do you watch the show uh, Arrow with Suicide Squad no. in it? In my opinion, and I love Arrow and right. Flash and all that stuff, but I think that that bit that they do in that mm -hmm. show, I don't like it really. You don't like it? So mm -hmm. hopefully this Suicide Squad comes out because everything so far has been on point. Not only is do you, it... Do you have the Suicide Squad animated movie? No, you've told me to watch it. See, because I have this. this and Joker's in it. So is Batman. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's being directed by David Ayer. Mm -hmm. David Ayer, every movie he's made so far, rated R. I don't think they're going to do that, though. But it'll be gritty as hell. Yeah, but that's the thing, though, is that rated R is like one extra F bomb and right. some blood. Blood, right. Maybe yeah. a little bit of ass. I think the rule is one F bomb. You're allowed, PG you're allowed one and then not <laughs> right. blood splatter and stuff uh -huh. like that. I think with the rated R, you're allowed like side boob right. butt shots and stuff like that. Which, which may we, happen with Harley Quinn. Well, see, if you've seen the animated, <laughs> yeah. Harley's a freak. Yeah. So um, her and Deadshot, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, all right. So, and then another thing that's coming out is the rumors of Batman's role in Suicide Squad. I Club. just heard that. So basically... There's two, there's two versions. Right. So basically, the version I heard was he's kind of like a boogeyman. Yeah. Like he doesn't... No one has really seen him. There's just some footage of a... Uh, uh, like a... Like a... What's that movie? The Ring? Uh -huh. Like that style, like where it's like yep. surveillance stuff. Yep. And then the only person that the government has access to who is actually is the had Joker. interaction with Batman is the Joker. And they need that his dynamic. Help. They need his help to pull mm -hmm. him out because yeah. the Suicide Squad supposedly is going after Batman. <sighs> which wow. Which in the animated movie it was different. They actually released the Joker on accident and they had to go and get him and then Batman heard of it. Okay. And he went in there and did his thing. If they're using Joker to get Batman, I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know what to think just because this is going to be, I think, their uh, small introduction into Batman, Joker, their mythos, and they're using Suicide Squad to do it mm -hmm. without ca calling the movie Batman. 
Right. You know what I mean? Interesting. That's so. interesting. Yeah, maybe they're trying to build up this version of Batman mm-hmm. for the eventual Batman or whatever they're doing with that character. The the thing that you guys or everybody, um, movie and comic book fans alike, need to understand is that the way that the movies are being made now, it's it's very it's very similar to a book. Yes. So the Marvel thing, it's just it's set up just like their comic books, where yeah. there are story arcs of other stories in that arc. Mm-hmm. So if you read X Men One and Amazing Spider Man Two, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the the story rolls into those different books. So that's what that's why they're jumping from Captain America to Avengers to Iron Man to Thor to this that and the other, and it's all one continuous line. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're doing here. So there's not going to be any more Batman One. Batman 2. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, none of that stuff. It's all gonna be, like... It's gonna be sick. They're making a freaking visual world. I know. Comic books died for a little bit, right? They kind of came back as a revive because of the movies, I feel. And I feel like movies... I know it takes a lot more work and money, but at the same time, you get a lot more money, right? Well, this this is the thing. Is that comic book fans like myself that have been into this stuff for ever since we were little, this is what we've been waiting for. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I've always read in Wizard magazines and all this stuff. Do you even know what a Wizard magazine is? No. That's nerd <laughs> shit. That's what it is. It's straight nerd <laughs> shit. And it's the best magazine ever besides like Slam and Kicks. Oh. So, what it is is that I've been reading about this stuff forever. Yeah. They're possibly going to make this movie or they want to do that movie or mm-hmm. whatever the theory is. And they've just never been able to do it. Technology just has not been caught up. There's always been some sort of legal issue yeah. as well. Uh, Spider Man, especially. Now it's just like this is. It's happening. There was once what they called the golden age of comics. Mm-hmm. It's back. I'm back! But yeah, it's in movie definitely. form. It's yeah. in movie form. And it's awesome. It's better, right? I, that's my problem is that I'm such a nerd. I like right, all of like... it. So I'm able to read it. I'm able to watch it on cartoons. I'm able to watch it in live action. And that's just... I would love it. Like, it's it's every hardcore fanboy's dream is to have it in every type of medium there is. A hypothetical here. Mm-hmm. 30 years down the line. From, We're going like, way... From real from, life? Yeah, real life. We're in the future 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. Which universe do you think you'll look back and go, that was better? Because it's eventual. DC vs. Marvel, it's always been a rivalry. It's going to be 30 years from now. I've always, ever since being a kid, I've always been more drawn to DC. Okay, so... And I love Marvel, so don't... I like both of them. I'm not one or the other. But yeah, well, uh, some people you can't. True. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't like steak and sucks chicken. For, sucks for you. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know what I mean? And DC has always been grittier. Mm-hmm. There was a small period of time in the 60s and 70s where all comics were whack. Yeah. And campy mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And when things started to shift, it was because DC Comics shifted it. Marvel didn't do it first, DC did it. They even copy each other's characters all the damn time. Oh, definitely. And they do it knowingly, like it's yeah. not like a like a shot or anything. It's no. just that's just what they do. So, are you more excited for the upcoming DC stuff? So the next 4 or 5 DC or the next 4 or 5 Marvel? Which one are you more excited for? I am excited for all of it. Mm-hmm. I just hope it's all good. That's my only right. that's my only concern is just don't f- Batman and Robin this sh- Mm-hmm. Please don't do it. Just yeah. make it good. Nipples, right? No bat nipples. No, <laughs> no ass shots. Uh, keep Silverstone. What's her name? Alicia, Alicia Silver- Silverstone. Keep oh. her way the f- out of there. Yeah. We don't need Batgirl. None of that stuff. They're mm-hmm. supposed to tease Robin. That's the thing yeah. that really gets me is mm-hmm. that in this Suicide Squad movie, you're gonna supposedly find out that Joker killed Batman's sidekick. Which mm-hmm. means Robin existed, and if they're only doing one Robin, I think that's kind of weak, just because you're con- you're you're literally going to be living out Dick Grayson because um, only one Robin died. If it was the second Robin, that means that there's another one out there mm-hmm. who was before him, which means Nightwing could possibly get some shine. Hey, that's the dream, right? That would be sick. Okay, so yeah, well, I have my concerns with DC. So I would say I'm more excited for the Marvel stuff because my favorite superhero is Spider-Man. And mm-hmm. Spider-Man just came in. We talked about that last episode. So you just let us know what you guys think. Which slate are you more excited for, DC or Marvel? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you're a real nerd, you're excited for both of them. One more time with this because I love it so much. On this song, you're going to get really, really, really crazy. 
This is awesome. <laughs> really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. We got our comic book, a trivia, everything. Like, fanboys just build it up, and we just love to duke it all out which is what we just did let's switch mm -hmm. gears a little bit something else we love basketball playoffs are coming right around the corner i think there's about 16 15 games left in the regular season the warriors have still not cooled off they're still rolling they're on and off a couple couple of things. Uh, yeah but they're, they're also resting a couple yeah. injuries yeah. Um, but i say for the most part they're staying consistent i want to know who do you think can stop the Warriors from coming out of the Western Conference, making it to the finals, the NBA finals? Playoff matchup? Yeah, who are you scared of? Who Everybody. do you not want to see? Everybody. Everybody? Everybody. I just wish that you can just use your little Mario Cloud and skip a few levels. So, see, this is a classic <laughs> Warriors fan because he is so used to getting we pooped on. Yeah we, have, yeah, we have a system here that we've used for years where we are good, and then right when you start to believe, we pull it right back. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's all. I'm, that's all I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. Just don't be consistent. Be someone else. Be the Bulls. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just go for it. Yeah. So, who am I afraid of? I'm afraid of the Clippers. Okay. Because they've proven that they can f us, uh -huh. especially if we don't have Bogut. Yes. Bogut's our key right here. But even last year. We were one or two tips away, calls away from winning two games, which would put us into the next round against the Clippers without Bogut. Yes, but and our they, bench. they have a Blake that can fly, and now he can shoot. On the contrary, the Clippers are the most entitled team in the NBA, and I they haven't done anything. I don't care. They're good, though. You cannot deny... I'm not a Clipper fan, but you cannot deny how good they are. They're a scary team. I'm not as worried as the Clippers. The only the only thing that we have over them is a solid bench. And even then, mm -hmm. our bench isn't that good. They're just, yeah. they're solid. They have Jamal Crawford. That's it. Okay. Okay? But sometimes, he's enough. Then, we have Houston. <laughs> okay. Okay? Okay. This guy over there, he's got a beard. Mm -hmm. He can f*** over any team in like a matter of minutes. Oh, yes! If there was a... If there was like a basketball Bible, mm -hmm. he would be like one of the main dudes in it, right? He's, he's the, got the beard. He's the guy that I would hate playing against. Oh, definitely. Because he just baits the ref into getting them he's, these calls. Mm -hmm. When you're playing them straight up, that's the most frustrating thing. When you're yeah. playing someone straight up and they're trying to swindle the ref into giving them a call, it's like, what can I do? I'm playing you straight up. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's the whole the whole game nowadays is different, so we can't even that'll throw us off into a whole different mm -hmm. tangent. Basically, that team's scary. Also, Dallas, you can't. They've they've got pieces. Dallas is the most magical franchise in the NBA for me because <laughs> they, they, they could be totally off the map, and then all of a sudden. Be LeBron James in the championship and shut yeah. him down. Well, that's the thing, though, is that because we're in the Bay, we don't get their games all the time. Mm -hmm. And so you don't really hear about them unless mm -hmm. you're constantly like watching NBA TV or something. Mm -hmm. And and playoff Rondo is a thing, well, right? There's Rondo, there's Ellis, there's uh, there's Dirk. I mean, it's it's a they have Chandler now. I think it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a crazy. Just looking at their team, it's like, dude, that's that would suck. Okay. You, you've got a bunch of all-stars, basically, whether they're old all-stars or new all-stars. Mm -hmm. Experience. Yeah. What about the Spurs? What's your take on the Spurs? The Spurs are also scary because uh, we played them, I think, with just our entire bench, and they still kicked our ass. You know what I mean? Like, if we can't even beat their basic guys, like, we're screwed. Age is a real thing, and it's got to catch up with them sometime. That's, I, that's my only, like, holding hope. Right. I agree that the Spurs will be a tough matchup for us, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think the Spurs are going to have tough matchups before us you know what i'm saying they have been the west mm -hmm. has not been an easy conference in the past like three or four years yeah, it's been crazy so you can't even you just can't not give them credit the scariest team is all because of one guy and that's okc and russell westbrook that guy's a monster dude i know like, but i don't even know where he came from like he yeah he's, he's been he's been good but he's not been this good he he's remind me of a point guard version of super raw Michael. Uh, that, I was just going to say, he's a very rookie Michael Jordan. So raw, and his intensity. The guy's face got crushed in, I know. in a game, I know. and he kept playing. Came back two days later Dude. and got triple-double. I mean, it's unreal. It's unreal. And being a point guard, getting a triple-double at that level, and you're not even being that great of a passer or a shooter, per se. Yeah. People don't give him that credit. They they credit his athleticism and his driving ability. If you compare him to rookie Michael, same thing though. Exactly. So I mean, he I've always believed in Russell, but KD just had a setback with his injury. He's well, out that, indefinitely. That, that's the thing is that I, I 
like just just listening in like being like a fly on the wall you might already kind of count them out just because mm-hmm. of KD but they've been doing it without him almost all season mm-hmm. and it's kind of crazy and the season before that it was the reverse where they did it without Russell with, yeah and without Russell they couldn't keep going mm-hmm. in the playoffs so you automatically see what he can do for a team yeah and you can kind of no offense to KD cuz he's last year's MVP right but you can kind of see when he's not there, it's not a big difference so far. I don't know about you, but I would love to see the Pelicans beat out the Thunder in the playoffs so I could see the brow in Golden State. I think that'd be great. Look, <laughs> what I hope happens is that everybody gets tuckered out, and then when they play us, right. we just win. That's all I... I'm still right. skeptical. <laughs> Dub Nation for life. But we got to be realistic. we got to be realistic here and just know what our history shows us. And it's proven to repeat itself, so we're just hoping it doesn't do that. I think we can handle every team you just said, but the team I'm scared of is Memphis. And I'll tell Uh, you why. See, that's the thing, is that I forget about... The the West is stacked. That's the only team where I legit coin flip on Game 7. I think that series would go 7 games, and at the end, I'm not saying the Warriors are winning or the Grizzlies are winning. Mm -hmm. I'm just watching the game. But Memphis scares me because Draymond's our best uh, defender, all-around defender. Mm Mm-hmm. And he is 6'7". DeMarcus Cousins, that guy over in SAC who's a beast, right? He was interviewed with Bill Simmons. And Bill asked him, hey, what big do you hate playing against the most? Like, after the game, your body hurts. The next morning, your body hurts. And he said, it's not one big. It's Marcus Gasol and Zebo. Marcus Gasol and Zebo. <laughs> Marcus Gasol? And Zebo, yes. You, you will. Oh, the combo of those yes. two guys. You will feel it the next day. <laughs> Marcus Saul and Zebo, yeah, okay? That's what I'm saying though. If we don't have Bogut, we've yeah, got I know. nothing. But nothing. Again, Bogut's made of glass, so <laughs> he might get beat up. Yeah. Draymond's too short for Zebo. Draymond cannot handle Zebo. It doesn't matter about handling him. That guy's attitude is going to be so just adrenaline true that it's not going to matter. True. Okay? Uh, but there's more than one series. Yes. That's what I'm saying is that it doesn't I'm I'm afraid of the entire Western Conference. Let's mm-hmm. just be honest. Memphis and Golden State if they were to meet in the playoffs it'd be in the Western Conference Finals. And another thing that scares me is it, I don't care where any team is placed, I don't want to play against any of them. <laughs> I know. Another <laughs> so. thing that scares me about Memphis is who are our two best players on the Warriors? Steph and Clay, right? Yeah. Memphis has Conley and Allen. These two guys are amazing defenders. So, I mean, that's going to be tough for our our guys. And we're really going to have to rely on guys like Harrison Barnes and well, Andre Iguodala to really push the push the envelope for us. This, 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 is where, this is the playoffs, though. This is the thing, is that you could be so good during the regular season, but you, you're you really tested in the playoffs. Oh, I know. The you playoff, really show who you are in the Yeah, playoffs. the playoffs is a different beast. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying, is that we've proven... Proven that in fourth quarters we can suck pretty good. Yep. You know we've blown games mm-hmm. like, and I'm not saying this year. I'm just saying in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know about a series because it's seven games. Seven games. Uh, it's a sketchy thing. Right. So don't say someone's gonna win on a seven game because it depends. Because if it's if Michael Jordan's there, he never got into a game seven except still, in the still, finals. In the finals, it was still though. If he was there, I would bet on MJ. Yeah, but here's the thing. He just never allowed that to happen. Well, that's, that's the greatness of Michael. That, that's what I'm saying, though, is that I would bet, I would bet <laughs> on that dude. Even well, he bet on himself in, with against Indiana. Even when he thought that he was screwed, he somehow figured out how yeah. to do it. So, True. you know. Jordan in a NBA Final Game 7 is the greatest thing that never happened. Mm-hmm. Okay, listen, if you like a, a team in the West that's not the Warriors and you're confident that you guys could beat us, let us know in the comment section below. Tell us why you think your team could beat us because... He's scared. I'm scared of Memphis. <laughs> he, I mean, he's a classic Dubs fan, so yeah. we got to take that for what it is. But just let us know in the comment section below. You know what's funny, though? I could care less about what's happening in the East. I know. They're not uh, They're not even a blip on the radar. I feel bad for anyone in the West Coast, or sorry, the East Coast, who has the team. It's just terrible. Well, can't wait for the playoffs. Next topic. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so next week, um, next weekend, rather... The Air Jordan 10 with the double nickel, 45 branding on it, is coming out. Mm -hmm. It's part of the remastered collection. Mm -hmm. Now that we've had a couple remastered releases come out under our belt, what's your overall perception of it? Is it worth it? Uh, What do you think about the remastered um, collection? I'm wishy-washy on it. Okay. I like the extra quality. I'm okay with paying a little bit extra. Talked about this before where the pricing doesn't make sense. Even the remastered stuff. Yes. 
So what it's done is make myself, along with a bunch of other people, more selective. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Would you rather have that one remastered or the two to three retros in between each remastered release? Is it worth it? Because you can't have it all. You just can't. Unless you're rich, which we're not. So with that... I would definitely skip certain things, like those, uh, those fours that just came out. Laser fours, yeah. the Jordan 1 laser, things like that. Good quality, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But for a guy like me, no, because this is what I'm, I'm mostly about. I like mm -hmm. the classic stuff, the stuff yeah. I remember as a kid, these weird colors. Right. They don't do much for me. The Chicago double nickel, whatever you want to call them, that one actually pisses me off a little bit. <laughs> these came out not too long ago. These, ca these just came out in 2012. 12, right? Yeah. Okay. This is my brand new pair. I have a pair that I've hooped in and I wear casually and stuff, so I bought two, uh -huh. right? You know why I did that? Why? Because this is the first time this colorway ever retroed. Okay, yeah. In okay. its existence, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So this is the first in 2012. What year are we in right now? 15. That's not that long to do it again and then to do it better. That there makes me want to take this and just... Punt it. Well, you this shoe I mean? makes a lot of people angry because remember when it came out, uh, people's stuff right here was all messed up. Like I said, Champion ship. Yeah, and was missing that's, and stuff. That's, that's normal. That's like that's like being a Warriors fan and just kind of being scared of the yeah. playoffs. Yeah, you expect some quality issues with with Jordan Brand stuff. You know, with that, am I going to buy the double nickel? Probably. At least I'm going to try. Am I going to buy anything else? I don't think so. I mean, it's got to be one of those times where I just happen to walk in there. Right. I actually, this happened to me yesterday when I was buying all this stuff on the table. I went in and they still had those laser uh, fours. Mm, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, they said like one o'clock, because if they don't sell, these guys are trying to push it on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're just like, yeah, by one o'clock. Um, and it was like 12.56 or something like that. Like <laughs> He's like, at one o'clock, we can sell these things. And I was just like, it's basically one now. Like if I wanted to, what's stopping you from selling yeah. it to me, right? Yeah. And I was just like... I was like, uh, I'm not gonna grab them anyways. Like I have, I have behind here. I have like every color of force that I could ever right. want for two fifty for an all white shoe with an icy sole that's gonna turn yellow eventually. Not worth it. No, it's just not. And that colorway's it just it's it's a nice colorway, but it sucks for two fifty. I just bought the twenties for two fifty. You're trying to sell me something from nineteen eighty nine for mm -hmm. two fifty. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, and that's the main thing that I think anybody with a logical like state of mind will. Just where where are these numbers coming from? My take on the remastered is I love it. I got the fours, the Oreo fours. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing those right now. <sighs> so comfortable. Yes. It's turned into my go-to everyday sneaker. Well, that's what my problem is, is that with every remastered shoe I pick up, it ends up being the only shoe I wear. Yeah, and it basically every other sh uh, four now that I have... I don't even want them. Why would I wear it? Even though they, those are the ones with the classic colors. Exactly. And they know what they're doing, uh. so they're gonna remaster the classic colors. Well, which that's just good came, then. which just came out though. Let's say you're Look, my advisor, you're my sneaker advisor. Do I sell my classic colorways now before they announce these things? Of course, but <laughs> it's still one of those things where it's like, like I understand you got to run a business. Yeah. But where is any type of integrity? behind it and everybody knows this everything that you just bought now is garbage if you're a kid out there and you only can afford one pair of shoes um be patient wait for the remastered stuff because in my opinion those are worth it and if you i think this is a problem for people who are are boat collectors and they like to get every release now the the prices are going up and it's hard to mm -hmm. just shell out money for it because you because i mean we're collectors we need the every piece you of the all. pack, you, yeah. knew, you know, and it's getting harder and harder. Um, so I think it's kind of changing the game a little bit. Now you actually have to pick what you want to mm -hmm. actually buy. And in my opinion, remastered, but not the double nickel ones because we want yeah, those. Yeah, I need those so yeah. you guys can sleep on that. After that, then do it. Have Take our it. advice. Until until another colorway that I like comes out. And then <laughs> just, I'll let you guys know. Then we'll put you to sleep. Yeah, follow me on Twitter. I'll tell you. <laughs> which colorways I want and just leave them for me. <laughs> Don't put out certain shoes that just released. Mm -hmm. Let it marinate for a little while. Yeah. Don't drop the double nickel, even though it's, that's what I'm saying though, it's the anniversary mm -hmm. of I'm back and all this stuff. All these people that weren't even around back then are going to be trying to grab these so that they could resell them to people like me that were around because yeah. we couldn't grab them. All this stuff. 
this is a game that I don't want to play. <laughs> it's the ultimate game, right? Because the young kids have nothing better to do than to do that. But you're all grown up and you have stuff you have to do. You can't get the shoe. Yeah. It's the ultimate stupid game. It's the ultimate f*** you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to say right now, like, f*** that. Like, I'm not dealing with it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, that's so, just... But, again, that's life, and you have to find a way to work around it, you know? That, that is the way the cookie crumbles, and it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? So, it's not like I'm really gonna, like, I'm not gonna die if I don't yeah. get those shoes, right? I'm just saying that as a fan, as somebody that's been fairly loyal as a consumer or mm -hmm. whatever, it's just, it's just, it's, it's weird. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's a whole bunch of other uh, adjectives like used to describe it and everything, but it's just weird. The whole thing doesn't make no sense. What's happening with the retros that are sitting, I think they're still like selling, like they're gonna eventually run out, right? But it's not instant. It, there was a time from like, I would say 2010 to 13, mm -hmm. where a shoe would hit the shelf and literally be there for like a second and sell, right? Online it would sell, but I think now they're sitting for two or three days before they, they actually sell out. It depends on the colorway. Um, True, yeah. You know, Like, so, I think those fours will be gone next week, you know? Uh, they're probably gone today. Yeah. I mean, it's like... It's just not as instantaneous. There used to be lineups on every colorway. Well, what I don't understand is, like, certain colorways, like those, uh, those, uh, Flint 7s or whatever they're called, the 7s that just released. The French Blue, right? Yeah, French Blue 7s, right? Mm -hmm. Those... Those were sitting for weeks. Yeah. All right. And then this really whack colorway comes out. The um, Martian? The Martian or the <laughs> Barcelona Knights or whatever, right? right? That shoe comes out and people ate it up. And like I was like, you, you really thought that that colorway was nicer than... <laughs> well, I think the, the <laughs> you know? Marvin the Martian helped because anybody into Jordans eats up Space Jam. Like, it's that water in a desert. But that wasn't even the shoe's real... Game, I know, but... You know what I mean? But that's but that's what the um, Jordan brand wants. They want us people, I'm talking bloggers or whatever, mm -hmm. to give them a nickname to help sell the shoe, right? Look, someone saw it and goes, hey, those colors look like Marvin the Martian. Intentional or not intentional, doesn't matter. Someone called it the Marvin the Martians, yeah. and people... Space Jam, anything, they're ravaged beast against Space Jam, and they just, that's just anything. And that's just dumb, dude. <laughs> because Space Jam was a bad movie that Jordan fans, like, good, loved. It was a good movie, you were talking about. <laughs> See? Exactly. No, I know, I got the DVD, <laughs> so, I love it. And I eat it up the same way, but at the same time, I'm not gonna wear the Marvin the Martian 7s, because... They're just not that cool. But I will say this, if they had a Jumpman on it, that was like Marvin the Martian doing the Jumpman. Oh. Okay, now you're talking a different story. Like the hair ones? Like the hair ones yeah. that are really soon. That's a different story, but since it's an unofficial Marvin the Martian, that, that would have That would have been a cool concept, but it's still a whack colorway. Still so, whack, but again, that's a different conversation. That we'll have a different day. Okay, true. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so, Alright guys, that pretty much takes care of episode 3 of Trash Talk. We, we just wanted to thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks for supporting the show. We really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the topics that we've talked about today, just leave them down below in the comment section. As well as uh, next episode, we're going to take some of these questions from the comment section and answer them in the next video. So if you have anything that you'd like to ask either myself or Jaren, maybe you want us both to tackle a question, uh, get kind of that uh, the new generation and the old generation uh, on top of one subject, just let us know and we'll do that. So thank you guys so much and until next time guys, have a good one. <laughs>